Welcome to Philosophy Vibe. My name is George and today I wanted to look at and discuss a very fascinating theory around the philosophy of time that's referenced quite a lot in sci-fi movies, either directly or indirectly. The theory is four-dimensionalism, also referred to as temporal parts. Now, what is remarkable about this theory is that it's actually a really dense metaphysical topic on the academic side. When you study this, you can get quite lost in the philosophical details and the philosophical jargon. It's really quite challenging. But equally, it is one of the most referenced and depicted theories in popular movies, which I find quite fascinating. How can something so complex and deep also be so popular and widespread? to the point that it's become quite an accepted and believed ontological theory around time, you know, for those who are interested in this sort of subject. Now, there's been some marvellous attempts to display this theory on the big screen, and in the world of fantasy and sci-fi, it is magnificent to watch, but it doesn't go deep enough. And then, on the other side, in the world of philosophy, the subject is so heavy and so complicated so I thought, let's meet in the middle. I want to have a more informal philosophical chat about this theory. Let's dissect it and try to understand it a bit better from a philosophical perspective. So, how should we understand the concept of time? How do we and objects in general persist and change through time? And what does this mean for our identity? If you're a sci-fi geek and interested in the philosophy of time, Let's dive into some metaphysics and take a look at four-dimensionalism. But before we get into it, I did want to say, if you're watching this video, then you clearly have an appetite for knowledge, you value education, and you want to broaden your horizons. Philosophy Vibe really celebrates this. I mean, this is what this channel is all about. As such, it gives me great pleasure to say that today's video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an educational platform it teaches various subjects through a hands-on learning experience with thousands of interactive lessons. It offers courses in maths, data analysis, programming and AI. The most wonderful part of Brilliant is that by using it regularly, you really build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorising. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also be becoming a better thinker. I've used Brilliant.org for the logic courses. Being a philosopher, logic is always an interesting topic for me. Perhaps your interest is in maths, programming or data, AI. Brilliant's full range of courses lets you turn your curiosity into comprehension. Whether you want to build and use formulas to solve real problems in business and everyday life, or peek under the hood of large language models like ChatGPT to understand the concepts power in today's technology, Brilliant has you covered. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash philosophy vibe or scan the QR code on the screen or you can click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And with that, let's get back to the video. So to understand fourth dimensionalism, let's just understand the first, second and third dimension. The three dimensions are typically used to describe space. When we are talking about space, especially in terms of mathematics, one dimension is usually a straight line. There is length but no width. Two dimensions, we now have length and width, but no depth. So now we're in the realm of flat shapes. This can be measured against an X and a Y axis. Three dimensions, or 3D, we now have length, width, and depth, and can be measured on an X, Y, and Z axis. So, for 3D, we're in the realm of the physical world. You are three-dimensional. Any object you touch is three-dimensional. It takes up a portion of space. It has length, width, and depth. So, first dimension is a single line, two dimension is a flat shape, Three dimension is a physical object occupying space. We then move onto the fourth dimension. We are no longer in the realm of space. We are now in the realm of time. Just like you take up space, the argument is made that you take up time too. Space-time exist together. 
And if you are here now, you're existing in space as you are existing in time. You existed in space-time yesterday and the day before and most likely tomorrow and so on and so forth. And so here lies the heart of four-dimensionalism. You, me, everyone and everything's persistence in time is similar to its persistence in space. You have persistence in time the way you have extension in space. Now here is the interesting part. Right now, you are in fact occupying different areas of space all at the same time, right? Your head is located in one part of space, your right hand in another, your left foot in another, and so on and so on. This is pretty straightforward. Even though you are one entity, you still take up different regions of space all at the same time. This is because you have different spatial parts. This is where four-dimensionalism gets fascinating because a similar belief is held. We are all taking up different portions of time all at once. Just like we have different spatial parts, we too have different temporal parts. Four-dimensionalism falls under the eternalist belief in time. Eternalism is the idea that all of time obtains at once, Time is almost like a block, so the past, present and future are all equally real. This is opposed to presentism, a belief which holds that only the present time is real. Everything is the present, the past no longer exists and the future hasn't happened yet. So if you are an eternalist, you maintain that the totality of time is real, past, present and future and although your 3D self exists in the present, your four-dimensional self is all of your existence. You exist across your past, present and future all at once. Just like you occupy different portions of space at once, you occupy different portions of time too. But how is this so? Well, just like your head or your toes are different spatial parts, your fourth dimensional self has different temporal parts. This falls under what is known as perdurantism, the belief that your whole timeline is all one, but it consists of many different temporal parts. So you right now, sitting here watching this YouTube video, this is a temporal part of your existence. You, five years ago in the classroom, that's another temporal part. For the perdurantist, our four-dimensional selves exist like a time worm. From the start of our lives to the end of our lives, we exist as this worm across time. And any specific part of our lives we refer to, be it a specific part of the past or the present or something that's going to happen in the future, it's just a time slice of this time worm. It is a temporal part. So our entire existence, our whole lives exist as this one time worm. It exists as one entity across time. And any moment of time we are in, either conscious of, or remember, or will happen, is just a temporal part. So, as we perceive our reality, we are three-dimensional beings persisting through time. We exist in the fourth dimension as three-dimensional beings perceiving three-dimensional beings and objects. If we elevated up the dimensions and could perceive the fourth dimension rather than exist in it, it's hard to say exactly what it would look like, but we would not exist in a part of time. Rather, we would exist across time. We would be our past, present and future at once. We would be our total existence, our full selves. Now, imagine your shadow is your two-dimensional self right? And you are your three-dimensional self. Your time worm is your four-dimensional self. Just as your shadow is dependent on your 3D movements, so to speak, it sort of follows the 3D self, you are like the shadow of your 4D self. You follow your time worm and persist through its temporal parts. This is a really out there theory, but not only is it so fascinating, there is a lot of reason and logic behind it too. 
Firstly, if you study metaphysics, a lot of theories touch upon this greater reality. Plato's theory of forms comes to mind here, as well as the allegory of the cave, and the shadows of the objects, this is all beautifully linked. Could our four-dimensional time-worm selves be the form of us in the world of forms? On an ontological level, four-dimensionalism helps solve all the metaphysical challenges around identity. When someone says, I, what exactly are they referring to, given that we as people are constantly changing? Compare your 15-year-old self to your 15-week-old self, or your 80-year-old self to your 40-year-old self. Vastly different beings here, yet they are all still you. So what is this you? What is the identity that makes you at 15 weeks old the same you at 80 years old? Four-dimensionalism solves this problem as all the different yous are just temporal parts of the greater fourth-dimensional you. You at 15 weeks is a time slice of your temporal worm. So was the you at 15 years old and 30 years old and 80 years old, etc, etc. You are really this big time worm and every part of you, when you were two feet tall or six feet tall, when you had long hair, when you had short hair, when you were young and fit or old and wrinkly, these are different time slices of the fourth dimensional you. The change doesn't matter as you are the total one entity, the four dimensional time worm. This identity solving also applies to inanimate objects too, as these objects change over time. The same problems can be marshalled. Look at the ship of Theseus, for example. If you are unfamiliar with this problem, then check out our video on the subject. But in short, a museum takes ownership of a historic famous ship of Theseus. Over the years, parts of the ship decay and are replaced. After hundreds and hundreds of years, not one original part of the ship still remains. Yet, this is still seen as and referred to as the ship of Theseus. Is it right to hold on to this identity? If not, when did its identity change? When did it cease to be the ship of Theseus? This problem has had metaphysicians arguing for years, but four-dimensionalism offers a great solution. It is still the ship of Theseus. It is always the ship of Theseus, just different at different temporal parts, but its change is all part of its four-dimensional time worm. Or consider the apple in the fruit bowl. Today, it is a lovely red apple. In many weeks' time, this is a rotten apple. Now, without temporal parts, one would have to say the same apple can be ripe and rotten, a complete contradiction. But enter four-dimensionalism, and we can say the same apple was ripe during this temporal part and rotten during that temporal part. It is still the same apple with different temporal parts. This makes complete sense. Of course, a less desirable side effect of four-dimensionalism is effectively the elimination of free will. If the future, as we understand it, already exists as part of your time worm entity, then you have no effect on it. It already exists. It exists with the past and the present. So you effectively have no free will, no control. Yes, this is implied, but... It's only from your third dimensional perspective. If there is a fourth dimensional you, a greater you, so to speak, then what free will and free choice looks like in that dimension is completely different and so out of the scope of understanding for our three dimensional selves. Imagine your two dimensional shadow pondering its existence, saying, if I'm just a shadow, I can only follow where my three-dimensional self goes. I have no free will. Sure, but this does not limit the free will of the three-dimensional self. Now, of course, your two-dimensional shadow cannot ponder free will. And whilst you can, your understanding would be so minute and limited compared to what your four-dimensional self understands. So, whilst it may seem that four-dimensionalism poses challenges for free will. I think if you really dive into the metaphysical worlds, it isn't that relevant. Personally, I like the idea of four-dimensionalism because 
It holds on to the idea of a greater plane, a greater existence that we persist through. Whether it's called the fourth dimension or the afterlife or heaven, there still exists something greater, a greater reality that we are part of. If you clicked on this video and you've watched it this far, then you, my friend, are really interested in big ideas. You are a philosophy enthusiast with an appetite for metaphysics. Then you need to check out the Philosophy Vibe Metaphysics Anthology. For those of you unfamiliar with this channel, I have spent years discussing and debating philosophy with my friend John. We have compiled the scripts of our metaphysics video into the Metaphysics Paperback Anthology and it's available on Amazon. So if you want to learn about the philosophy of perception, the philosophy of mind, free will, determinism and more, then grab yourselves a copy of this book. A lot of fascinating, deep and wild theories all broken down into easily digestible dialogue debates. You will really enjoy this book and of course you will really be helping out this channel. The links are below. So that's it for now. As I said, this was a brief overview, but I hope I helped you understand four dimensionalism. And what are your thoughts? Who out there supports this theory? And if not, what do you see as the flaws of four dimensionalism? And do you perhaps have a stronger philosophy on time? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and share. And for more philosophical content, please subscribe to the channel. Take care and I'll see you all soon.